All right, so now we're talking about just total mechanical energy. So what is the mechanical energy of a 0.5 kilogram basketball? That's going to be our mass. We can already just start to identify things. Well, it's going through a hoop that is four meters high. So right there, that is going to be our, our height, okay, because it's talking about four meters high. And traveling at three meters per second. Well, what's meters per second? That's going to be a velocity. All right, now mechanical energy, mechanical energy, sometimes called total mechanical energy, TME, is just gonna be the sum of the gravitational plus the uh, elastic potential energies plus any kinetic energy that the thing has, all right? So in our case, we, we gotta ask ourselves, does it have gravitational potential energy? Is it up off the ground? And the answer is yeah, it's up, up, up off the ground because it's four meters high. So we're gonna have some potential energy gravitational. Is there a spring involved that's being compressed? And the answer is no. So we don't even have to worry about that. That's gonna be zero. All right, what about kinetic energy? Is it moving? And the answer, yeah, it's moving. It's got a speed of 3.3 3 meters per second. So, we're gonna to have to basically do kind of almost two problems at once and add them together. So P, so what we're gonna end up doing is total mechanical mechanical energy is gonna be equal to our PEG plus the kinetic energy, okay, plus zero. We don't have any elastic potential energy. So the total mechanical energy or the mechanical energy is gonna be, well, okay, PEG, the equation is MGH. Kinetic energy, is one half mv squared. Now pause it right there because if you need to and understand where I got these equations from. They're just the usual equations but now I'm having to add them together. All right, so now I'm just gonna start putting in numbers. So mass is 0 0.5 kilograms. The gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared. And the height we set up here is four meters, all right? Multiply those three numbers together, and then we add them to one half times the mass again, so 0.5 kilograms. Seems like mass always plays a role here, maybe not in elastic, but, all right, times the velocity squared, so three meters per second squared, and do not, do not forget that squared. That will mess you up, all right? Now, honestly, after this point, it's all just algebra. There's not really much to do, and so uh, I'm just going to solve it. I'm gonna put all these numbers into my calculator. I'm gonna make sure I do the order of operations correctly. I'm gonna do 0 0.5 times 9.8 times four, and if I really wanted to, it's not a bad idea, honestly, just to put parentheses around these things, just like this, yeah, look at that, okay? So plus, and then parentheses again, 0.5 or half times another 0.5 times the three squared. And then my answer, my total answer, is just gonna be 21.85, and I probably would round it to 0 0.9. Um, and because energy is always measured in joules, I could do all the, I could do all the cancellations and figure out what the units end up being, but energy is joules. Okay, double check my work to make sure I did it correctly, but that's how you do it. So for the second question here, this, how much potential energy would a car have? So potential energy, it doesn't specify which one, but cars and springs don't, cars don't usually run into springs and they're not launched by springs. We could assume it's gravitational, but what doesn't even specify, it doesn't matter. But it's got 700 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, so this is gonna be my Ke, and it's got 3,000 joules of mechanical energy. So this is my Me, or TME, total mechanical energy. And if you remember from up above, TME is just equal to any potential energy that it has plus any kinetic energy it has. Now in the previous question, we actually split up the potential energy we talked about gravitational and elastic potential energy as separate things, and that's always not a bad idea. But in this case, it literally tells us how much potential energy it has, and it doesn't specify which. So we're just gonna figure out potential energy. All right, so now what we can do is we can rearrange this if we like, but 
we could solve for potential energy right now. We could just subtract kinetic energy from both sides. Um, but because we're kind of just beginning with this, maybe that's not a, maybe we could just plug in numbers and see where it takes us. So it tells us the total mechanical energy is 3000 joules. And that's going to be equal to the potential energy, which is what we're trying to find, plus the kinetic energy. Okay, it tells us right here, it's 700 joules of kinetic energy. Well, this suddenly got really easy because we just had to solve for kinetic or potential energy. Now, this is being added. And so in order to get PE by itself, we just have to do the opposite or the inverse of added addition, which is going to be subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 700 joules from this side and it's going to leave PE by itself. But whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 700 joules and it turns out that if I'm okay now I'm pretty sure I know the answer here um, but it's always a bad, not a bad idea to just double check what you assume because it's easy to make little mistakes here and there and yeah I was right the answer is going to be 2300 or 2300 joules is going to be equal to our potential energy all right that is the answer it was just that easy